As we travel northeast, the last location we find in the capital wasteland is the Republic of Dave. What at first seems like a simple settlement with a windmill turns out to be something far more impressive. As we approach the main gate, we are addressed by a gatekeeper who is a small child named Ralph. Hey, who are you? What do you want from the Republic of Dave? One of the first choices we can make is to declare war on all of these poor people. We can respond by saying, Your Republic is forfeit. Prepare to be reclaimed by the Wasteland. Communist! She's a communist! Everyone come quick! With that, the wandering trader flees for cover, and all of the adults come out of their buildings, guns drawn, and open fire. We can unlock the main gate and run inside and kill everybody. Now, as we explore the Republic of Dave and talk with its inhabitants, we have that same option with every single person we talk to. Now that we know what it does, let's try to avoid selecting it. Instead, let's go back and talk with Ralph again. This time, let's be a little bit more neighborly and say, I'm not here to hurt anybody. What is this place? This is the Republic of Dave, duh. It's named for President Daddy, but you have to talk to him if you want to stay here. President Daddy? Well, I'm assuming this Dave must be Ralph's father, but maybe he can give us more information. Ralph, who is this Dave guy, and why does he have his own republic? He's the president of the Republic of Dave, duh. You can ask over at the Museum of Dave if you don't believe me. But you can't just wander around here. You need to go get permission from President Daddy first. All right then, I think I'd like to meet Dave. Okay, I'll take you. But President Daddy doesn't always like new people. Ralph kindly opens the gate for us, and then he walks at a snail's pace, past a big flagpole that doesn't have a flag, towards a big shack on top of the hill. This is the Capitol building of the Republic of Dave. He then brings us back to a large room to talk to a man leaning against the wall. This is none other than Dave himself. I am Dave, President of the Republic of Dave. You will address me as Mr. President, or I will have you executed. Now, are you applying for a citizenship, asylum, or just vacationing in the Republic of Dave? Wow, that sure is a friendly greeting. So our ultimate goal is to be allowed to explore this small nation and uncover all of its secrets. To do so, we've got to convince Dave. We have a number of options here. The first option is to ask for asylum. Ah! Another victim of persecution seeking protection from the mighty Republic of Dave. We get a lot of that here. I'll agree to harbor you for now. However, in exchange, you will reveal the secrets of your former nation to me or face exile. The secrets of my former nation? Forget it, Dave. I'm not giving you any secrets. Then you are hereby exiled from the Republic of Dave. Leave within 24 hours or I will have you executed by firing squad. <laughs> by by firing squad. Well, I wanted to see whether or not he was lying, so I sat in this room and waited 24 hours. Sure enough, 24 hours later, Dave opens fire. The rest of this nation's citizens come into the room guns blazing. Well, Dave is not a joker. This guy takes things seriously. Well, let's explore some of these other options. He wants my nation's secrets. Okay. Dave, I come from the land of the Mirelurks. They demand you surrender the Republic. The Republic of Dave does not recognize the rights of Mirelurks or the sovereignty of any Mirelurk nation. Your asylum is hereby revoked. You have 24 hours to leave the Republic of Dave or face execution. Well, that didn't work too well. Instead, we can say, My former nation was a vault. The only secrets were kept by the Overseer, and I never had access to them. Interesting. Um, well, the Republic of Dave is glad to welcome a former vault citizen to our fair nation. You hereby are granted asylum within the Republic of Dave. Just don't get on my bad side, refugee. All right, so that worked. But we do have another option. We can pass a speech check to say, My nation is a helpless, unarmed village to the north. We beg for your assistance. My assistants? Hmm. I suppose I can spare a few caps from the Department of Foreign Relations budget. Here. In a few years, I might annex your village to the Republic of Dave. 
Until then, you are free to exist in my fair nation as a refugee. This option grants us 25 caps. But there were some other choices at the beginning. Instead of asking for asylum, we can tell Dave that we seek citizenship. First off, you will address me as Mr. President. Always. No exceptions. Secondly, after careful consideration, the Office of Immigrant Affairs reports that we've already exceeded our quota for immigration this year. Application denied. You have 24 hours to leave the Republic or face deportation. Application denied? But whatever will I do without being a citizen of the Republic of Dave? Dave, you crazy condescending asshole. No one exiles me. Have it your way. You'll never leave the Republic. Alive, that is. And he immediately becomes aggressive. Merely insulting this guy turns him violent. Despite how inhospitable this guy is, killing him does grant you negative karma. Well, insulting him clearly angers him. We're not going to become a citizen that way. Instead, we can say, what if I just make a donation to the Republic and you let me stay? A donation, huh? Well, it just so happens that the Republic of Dave does grant special asylum to its supporters in times of crisis. A one-time refugee tax of 250 caps should be enough to handle the administration costs of letting you stay. Or you could always find the president a new hunting rifle. I lost the last one when I was out stalking Meyerlurks. Well, it gives us a couple of options, but we can also change our mind. We can say, Dave, I'm not giving you anything. Then you have 24 hours to remain in the Republic or face execution. Enjoy your stay. Oh, I will, Dave. We can try giving him the caps. Here you go, Dave. Here's your 250 caps. Yes, this will do nicely. Congratulations. You are now an official refugee of the Republic of Dave. It worked, but he calls us a refugee. Wait a minute, I thought we were applying for citizenship. We can always become a refugee by seeking asylum. Why can't we become citizens? Well, maybe the hunting rifle is the way. We can say, fine, I'll be back with one soon. Very well. I look forward to it, future refugee. Future refugee? He again calls us a refugee. That's not a citizen. Once we get a hunting rifle, we can come on back and talk with him again. I have the hunting rifle right here, Dave. Ah, you're back. So, have you brought a gift for the president? Yes, this will do nicely. Congratulations! You are now an official refugee of the Republic of Dave. Well, what a bummer. No matter what option we choose, we can only become a refugee. We can't actually become a citizen. Now, the other option, besides offering a donation, was to ask him if there was anything we could do. Hmm. Now that you mention it, the president could use a new hunting rifle. Tell you what. You find me a serviceable hunting rifle, and I'll grant you special asylum within my republic. Or you can just pay the 250 cap tax on unwanted refugees. In which case he offers us the exact same options, only with different dialogue. Notice he calls us unwanted refugees here. But let's say that we don't really want to stay here. We don't want to become refugees. We don't want to be citizens. Instead, we can say, I'm just a traveler. I guess you could say I'm vacationing. The Department of Tourist Rights has declared a tourism embargo that affects the entirety of the Republic of Dave. You have 24 hours to return to your home nation or face accelerated deportation. And again, he gives us a 24-hour time limit. If we try to talk with him again to extend that time limit... We have nothing more to talk about. Leave my Republic within 24 hours or you will be executed for treason. We again get dumped into the Hunting Rifle 250 Caps dialogue tree. The final option is to pass a speech check to convince him that we're actually an ambassador from the Wasteland. If we fail the check... That's just what I would expect to hear from another spy from the Wasteland. You have one hour to leave the Republic of Dave or be executed. But if we pass the check... You are? Excellent. It's good to see that the Wasteland has finally recognized the Sovereign Republic of Dave. If the people of the Wasteland are generous and respectful, I might deign to annex them. 
So Dave has plans to annex the entire wasteland. Well, good luck with that, Dave. Now that he has allowed us to stay in the Republic of Dave, we can ask him all sorts of questions about his Republic. Dave, er, I mean, Mr. President, what's going on in this place? There's an election for the next president. Don't look so surprised. Can't you see this is a Republic? I'd say it looks more like a dictatorship. Dictatorship? You insult me. Obviously, the wasteland radiation has taken away your capacity to reason. Or we can say, well, I really wouldn't know, I just got here. Ah, a seeker of knowledge then. Well, trust me, an election is what separates a president like myself from a monarch like my father. A monarch like your father? You mean, like a monarch butterfly? How much radiation have you been exposed to? Not the butterfly, you moron. I meant the kind of leader that holds his office for a life. My father inherited his political power from birth and renamed this great nation the Kingdom of Tom. Although I also inherited my political power from my father when I took over, I formed a republic so the people may elect their leader. Instead of either of those options, we can say, yes, I can absolutely clearly see that this is a republic. Well then, there you go. An election is what separates a president like myself from a monarch like my father. So then, uh, Mr. President, you're the one in charge here? That's right. As president, I am head of the Department of Tourist Rights, the Office of Immigrant Affairs, and the Bureau of Dave-like Activities. My proudest duty, second to the presidency, is commander and chief of the Army of Dave, the most ruthless military in the wasteland. Tell me more about yourself, Mr. President. Years ago, I freed these poor people from the wrath of Tom, former monarch of the kingdom of Tom. Afterwards, the people naturally elected me as their president and the Republic of Dave was formed. Any future plans for the Republic, Mr. President? Well, the Republic of Dave is the only true sovereign nation in the wasteland. The only really civilized place left in the world. One day, all wastelanders will be citizens in the Republic and know the greatness of their president. Hey, you mentioned earlier that there was an election going on. Who exactly is eligible to vote? That would be Bob, Shauna, Jessica, Rosie, and myself. In the Republic, if you're old enough to carry a weapon, you're old enough to vote. Rosie and Jessica are usually here in the capital. Bob usually hangs out outside near the Brahmin pen. Shauna runs the Museum of Dave, so you can find her there. Who's running in the election? Nobody except me. Why would the people need anyone else but Dave? I give them all that they ask for. Hey, well, I'm getting in the spirit of all of this wonderful democracy. I'd love to throw my hat into the ring and run for the presidency. I'm sorry, but the president must be a citizen of the Republic to run for office. So you do not qualify. Oh, what a bummer. I even went back through the tree again and applied for citizenship and got accepted. But even being accepted as a refugee, we don't get the option to run for president. My bet is that they initially had plans to allow you to run for president, which is where that citizenship line came from, but they ultimately axed it from the game. Now we find an option here saying, what was it you wanted me to do again, Dave? I told you before. I'll spare a few caps if you just tell each of the adults to get over to the voting booth sometime today. There's Jessica, Rosie, Bob, and Shauna. I already voted. But I don't recall him ever asking us to do that. But at any rate, at least now we know our task. Dave, the president of the Republic of Dave, wants all of his citizens to vote. So we need to visit everyone in the Republic and make sure that they have voted. First on our list is Rosie. We find her sitting down at the dinner table in the Capitol building. I heard that Dave allowed you to stay. Well, welcome, stranger. Just be mindful of the children. Hey, uh, Rosie, I'd like to hear more about the Republic. Sure, honey, but don't make it too long or Dave will start wondering why we're talking. Oh, Uh, All right, well, sounds a little Orwellian. Um, Can you tell me more about this Dave guy? Dave is a good man. He looks after all the children and makes sure they have plenty to do. He's bought a lot of toys, not that he'd admit it. He has our Shauna teach classes to the younger ones. She's over at the Museum of Dave to the west of the Republic. What about you? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Not much to say, really. I'm Dave's wife, 
or first wife, I guess. I've lived here for mm, many years now. Wait, 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 first wife? You mean he has more than one? Well, yes. Dave and I were married when he was wandering the wasteland, before inheriting the Republic from his father, Tom. After Ralph was born, Dave said that the President of the Republic needed to repopulate the wasteland. So, now we have a second wife. <sighs> oh, did he now? And you, you went with, with that? So you fell for it. You, you, she fell for it. Okay. All right, uh, Rosie, what's your take on the Republic? We have plenty of food and water here, and the compound is fairly safe. I'm glad the children can be raised here, away from the wasteland. I'd like to see more trading done with the local caravans, but Dave's afraid their outside influence could weaken the Republic. Who all's running in the election, Rosie? Only Dave. He's the only person who ever runs. Have you ever considered running for the presidency? Believe it or not, I used to lead a group bigger than this one on an old caravan route. I did it for years, and we did pretty well for ourselves. But what am I talking about? Running against Dave would be like betraying him. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We have a few options here. We can say, I know why you're not running for president. It's because you're too stupid, right? What? Stupid? Well, I guess this was all just a joke to you. You've had your fun. Now leave me alone. If we insult her with that option and then go back and say, I really think you should run for the presidency, she says... I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to betray Dave. Yeah, Rosie, maybe you shouldn't. It could be pretty tough. Hmm. Maybe you're right. More trouble than it's worth. Alternatively, we can try and reason with her and say, no, 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 no. You're thinking about this wrong. It's not betrayal. This is a free nation, right? Yeah, and like Dave says, freedom is the most free freedom that we have. You know what? You're right. I'll give it a shot. It's like my duty, isn't it? Yeah. In which case, we successfully convince her to run against Dave. Another way to convince her is to pass a speech check and to say, you could lead the Republic into a new era. Think of it, the democracy of Rosie. You're right. Dave's just been pushing me around. It's time for a change. Once we convince her to run for the presidency, we then need to tell her that she should go vote. Go on, Rosie, go vote for yourself now. You're right. I'll go right now. She gets up and walks over to an ammo crate under the stairs, which is being used as a ballot box. Fingers crossed. After she's done voting and comes back to the table, we see another woman sitting at the head of the table. This is Jessica. Tell me more about this Dave guy, Jessica. That's President Dave to you, Wastelander. Call him by his full name, or we'll shoot you. He takes care of all of us, even that selfish Rosie and her brats. My children will be a lot nicer than hers. Uh, wow, all right. Um, not that I really want to know any more about you, but for the sake of civility, could you tell me a little bit more about yourself, Jess? All I have to say is Dave is my husband. Mine. Do you understand? I don't care what Rosie has to say about it. Just because Rosie used to be this big leader out in the wasteland, she thinks she's better than me. She even ordered Dave around once. I see. This, this is the second wife. First wife. Rosie is the second wife since she's the oldest and not good for anything anymore. Jeez, well, I can see that Dave didn't marry her for her personality. Uh, Jess, what's your take on the Republic? Dave is a great leader. He's going to bring civilization back to the wasteland. One day, they'll say it all started here. And who's running? Only Dave. He's the only person who ever runs. Have you ever considered running for the presidency? No way. You'd have to be crazy to run against him. And that's it. We can convince his first wife, Rosie, to run against him, but we can't convince Jessica. If we play a female lone wanderer, as we leave, Jessica says, Stay away from Dave. He's mine. Well, golly gee, she is a gem, isn't she? 
Now, once we convince one of the other residents to run against Dave, we then get an option to tell the other residents to go vote. But bear in mind that we don't get this option unless we convince one of these people to run against Dave. If, for example, we want Dave to maintain the presidency so we don't convince anybody to run against him, we can't finish this side quest because we never find an option to tell them to go vote. So once we convince Rosie to run against her husband, we can go back to Jessica and remind Jessica to go vote. I guess you're right. I'll go right now. All done. Dave's the best. Now that we've unlocked this tidbit of gossip, we can go back to Dave and say, so, uh, Mr. President, you have two wives? Of course, as President of the Republic, I have a mandate to repopulate the wasteland. Hmm. As President, you have a mandate to repopulate. Okay. I mean, I think there are a lot of guys in this wasteland that would say the same thing if they could. And now that we know that Rosie is running against him, we can tell Dave that we think he might just have some competition. An opponent? Seriously? But, but, wait. No, this is a free republic. Let the people make their choice. I am confident that they will recognize me as their true and proper leader. This is a very revealing line here because it tells us that he genuinely in his heart of hearts does believe in the Republic. He believes in democracy. He wants the people here to be free. And yet at the same time, he's comfortable with his rule. He doesn't like being contradicted. He doesn't like being challenged, which is why he's nearly incredulous when we tell him that he has some competition. Well, we've fully explored the Capitol building, but there's a lot more to the Republic of Dave than just this building. Heading outside, we find a man named Bob wandering around. Come on, make it fast. I got chores. So, Bob, uh, Dave has two wives now? Yes, he does, and they're both pains in my ass. Always got to keep them in line or else they get all teary. <laughs> get all teary? Oh, gosh. Sounds like we've got another charming personality on our hands. All right, Bob, in your words, tell me about Dave. Dave made me second commander of the army of Dave. And that means I get a gun. Don't make me have to use it. Can you tell me more about yourself? All you need to know is that I'm second in command next to Dave. So don't bother me. And don't talk to Rosie or Jessica either. Those are Dave's wives and they have work they need to do. What's your take on the Republic? Dave is in charge. When he's not around, I'm in charge. If you want anything else, go to the Museum of Dave on the left side of the compound. Have you ever considered running for the presidency, Bob? Man, I'd love to be the president. Everybody would have to listen to me or I could just exile them to the wasteland. And the first thing I'd do is make myself the permanent leader so they couldn't vote me out in some other election. But there's no need for me to run. One year, Dave is just going to make me the leader just like my Grandpa Tom did for him. Grandpa Tom? Oh, Bob is Dave's son. So he's banking on Dave getting rid of the entire Republic idea and just turn it back into an inherited despotism. I don't think Bob understands how dedicated Dave is to the idea of a Republic. It's clear that Bob doesn't care about the Republic. He says that if he were ever to become in charge, he would get rid of it entirely, making himself tyrant for life. Well, if we want, we can convince Bob to run for the presidency. We can say, but Bob, I think you should go for it. Yeah? Well, it just so happens that I like being number two around here. So I think I'll just stay right where I am. Or we can play mind games with him and say, Oh, Bob, you're just too young to take Dave's place. Too young? Too young? I am so sick of everyone around here pulling that you're too young crap with me. I'm tired of it. I'm old enough to take Dave's place. I'll win that election and show everybody. In which case, he decides to run for the presidency. Or we can insult the kid and say, I don't think you should be in charge of anything. Yeah? Well, well, so's your face. Spoken like a wise leader. If we didn't play mind games with him, we can pass a speech check to say, Dave is corrupt. The Republic needs a new champion of freedom. I'm not stupid. You're just pushing me around. Ah, the kid catches on quick. But if we pass the speech check... Yeah, I'll show him. When I'm in charge, everyone will have to say I'm as good as Dave. Better even. Once we convince him to run against his father, we can tell him that he needs to go vote. Fine, I'll get out of the way. 
just like Rosie and Jessica, he goes inside and places his ballot in the ballot box. I'm gonna win this. As we head on over to the museum, we hear Dave's daughter Flower describe this entire farce as exactly what it is, a game. Hey there, are you gonna play Republic with us? This young girl realizes that these grown adults are just playing Republic. We can then enter the museum. Let's get class started. But I already know everything about Dave. The museum is also the nation's school. Bob has a lot of kids. All of these children are the kids he has had with Rosie. The school teacher is a young woman named Shauna, and she's one of the citizens that Dave wants us to convince to vote. So Dave gave you the okay, huh? Well, welcome then. I run the Museum of Dave, where the children of the Republic can learn about their heritage. Tell me more about the Republic of Dave, Shauna. Sure. The Museum of Dave is happy to answer any questions on behalf of the Republic of Dave's Office of Tourism. So how does Dave get away with having two wives? Dave revised the restrictive marriage laws of the Kingdom of Tom shortly after the Republic was formed. Multiple marriages is now considered one of the great free freedoms of the Republic of Dave. What are your thoughts on Dave? President Dave is the savior of the wasteland, bringing peace and order to the savages man has brought upon himself. If you would like to learn more, please stop by the Museum of Dave's official tour at 2 p.m. A museum tour at 2? Okay, I think I will. But before I do, tell me about yourself. Me? I just run the museum and teach classes to the little ones. You know, truth, justice, and the will of Dave. And what's your take on this republic? The Republic of Dave offers a rich history rivaling that of the great nations before the war. Have you ever considered running for the presidency? Absolutely not. In fact, I'd vote for Dave twice if I could. Hmm, it sounds like she's a true Dave believer, much like Jessica. So Dave has his own museum? Oh, yes. Everything here is from Dave's adventures in the wasteland before he founded the Republic. Does the museum accept donations? I'd never really thought about that before. Why do you ask? Now we have a couple of options here. We can pass a speech check to say, well, I just so happen to have some souvenirs from Dave's past for sale. They would make great additions to this museum. Oh, wonderful. I'd be happy to accept your contribution on behalf of the Republic. And Dave just increased the budget for the museum this year too. I was going to buy books for the children, but this is far more important. Then we can tell her that we're ready to sell her Dave's relics. Great. What do you have? She then becomes a merchant. She doesn't have anything for sale, but she does have 700 caps on her inventory, and we can sell her pretty much anything we want. Of course, I feel bad for doing this. She was going to use that money to buy the kids books. Alternatively, we can insult her by saying, everything in this museum looks like a piece of junk. Sir, everything here is authentic. Dave said so himself. Get out of my museum before I call for the army of Dave. But that just makes her mad, and she refuses to speak with us anymore. I have nothing more to say to you. You are the most un-Dave-like person I've ever met. Well, I'm really interested in this museum tour. We can take a look at some of the valuables over against the wall, and the first thing we notice is the perception bobblehead. The inscription on the base reads, Only through observation will you perceive weakness. Our perception has permanently increased by one. We can take this without fear of repercussions. It doesn't count as an item owned by the residents of the Republic of Dave. But if we try and steal anything else, if we get caught, they do turn hostile. Instead, we can go outside and wait until 2 p.m. the next day. When we come back into the museum, Shauna takes us on a tour. So, I'll just get started on the tour of the museum then. To my far right is the baby carriage that our great leader slept in as a newborn baby. Unlike most babies, he never cried and his poop didn't stink. Dave had eight siblings and made his own baseball team. The team was so good, in fact, the Wasteland team was so scared, it never showed up to compete. The briefcase is the very one Dave took with him when he became fed up with the poor ways that his father ran the nation. Dave brought back many items from the wasteland. It was artifacts like these that amassed the Republic's great wealth. Dave collects many war collectibles, including holotapes and war weaponry. This globe represents the whole planet that Dave traversed. Don't let its size fool you. 
The world is at least 50 times bigger than this. At least? I don't know who put that tire there. These weapons were used against the USA before the bombs fell. Dave probably acquired these when he walked to China. Walked? Dave is a world-renowned marksman, known for shooting an apple out of the hand of a raider from across the Potomac. Mounted to my left is the very head of the slain death claw that Dave encountered during his quest through the wastes. I know what you're thinking, and no, that's not a Brahmin skull. Brahmin have two heads, so there'd have to be two skulls for it to be Brahmin. Uh. Please, no touching. And that's the tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Wow. I am just blown away. Thanks, Shauna. Well, once we're done with the tour, we can go back to Shauna and tell her that if she's ready, she should go vote. Oh, no. Dave sent you to tell me that, didn't he? I'll go right away, I promise. And as expected, she votes for none other than Dave. Ah, Dave, lead our republic to glory. We can now explore the rest of this tiny, tiny nation, and there's really not a whole lot. The building directly across from the museum is the men's quarters. Here we just find a couple of beds for Bob, Ralph, and the other boys. Not Dave, because Dave sleeps in that really large bed in the Capitol building. The building directly north of this one is the women's quarters. And of course, there are bunk beds in here because he's got two wives, then Shauna the teacher, and a whole bunch of girls. And this is also where the kitchen is. There's an outhouse right next to the women's quarters, and it's got this persistent haze hovering right above the seat, which is disgusting. And then there's a teeny tiny little rifle range attached to the museum. Bob will sometimes come in here and shoot at the big dummy in the middle of the range. At mealtimes, the entire nation comes into the Capitol building and sits down at the dining room table. And despite how twisted this entire micronation is, I mean, we can't deny that Dave does keep them fed and sheltered and safe. That's saying something, I guess. Once we've convinced each of the adults to go ahead and vote, we can go back to Dave and tell him that all of the votes are in. Good. The votes are in. If you'll excuse me, I'll be getting started on tallying the numbers. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Here's your caps. Keep this up and I may deign to make you a citizen in a few years. Dave then walks over towards the ballot box to count the votes. Now, it's a game of simple math. We already know that Dave voted for himself. We also know that Shauna and Jessica voted for Dave. So that's three votes for Dave that he will always get all the time, no matter what. Which means that there are only two votes we can possibly take away from him. Bob's and Rosie's. Even if we convince both Bob and Rosie to run for the presidency, Dave still walks away with three, and each of his opponents only gets one. Which means Dave always wins. Unless we intervene, Dave will go to the ballot box, and at first he'll be surprised when he sees names that are not his own. Bob? Hmm. After counting the votes, the president is... Well, despite the hiccup, it looks like I am still declared the winner because he wins by a simple majority. We can talk with Bob and Rosie after, and they're not terribly surprised. I didn't win it, huh? Well, there'll always be other elections. Who needs it? I'd prefer to be second in command anyway. Did Dave win it again? I voted for him, you know. Did Dave win it again? I voted for him, you know. Now, the way that we can change the course of this election is to steal some of the ballots. The problem is that this ballot box is always locked and we don't find a key. We can't steal a key from Dave and he has no key in any of his containers. The only way we can access these votes is if we're really quick and we loot them from the ballot box just as Dave unlocks it. Inside, we'll see all of the votes. Three for Dave, as expected, one for Bob, and one for Rosie. If we don't convince Bob or Rosie to run, we'll instead find four or five votes for Dave. Now, we alter the outcome by looting these votes. The quirky thing is that these votes don't actually appear in our inventory. So, for example, we can't break down the stack of three votes for Dave. Now, since we can't split the stack, all we can do is remove the votes for Dave which on one hand you think would be a dead giveaway because Dave knows that Dave voted for himself and if he can't even find his own vote in the box, he'll know that something is up. 
But nevertheless, that's really the only option we have. The way to alter the election is to remove all other votes except for the vote of the person whom we want to win. In this case, I want Bob to win, so I'm going to leave Bob and only Bob's vote. The quirky thing about this is, even after we alter the votes, he still reads aloud votes for himself. A vote for me, and another vote for me. Bob? Wait a minute. Has somebody tampered with the ballot box? Hmm. After counting the votes, the president is... And without a word, he turns around and walks away. Now, I think he's supposed to give a little speech here. He does when Rosie wins. But for some reason, if Bob wins, he says nothing. He just leaves the shack and walks away. If we intercept him as he's walking away, he says, I guess you're wondering where I'm going. I'm off to annex old only and forge the new Republic of Dave. Don't try to stop me. He abandons his family just because he got voted out of office. What a scumbag. We can go back to Bob and he's pretty thrilled. Well now, President Bob, how do you like that? Boy, things are gonna change around here. First step, get rid of all this Dave shit. The Kingdom of Bob, or maybe Bobtopia. I'll have to give it some thought. But I guess you want something, don't you? Tell you what, Dave kept some old junk in that safe of his. I mean, my office. The code is 1138. Take whatever you want out of there. Consider it a gift from your kind and loving President Bob. He gives us a key to Dave's safe, and we can loot it of all of its valuables. But no one else in the community is really thrilled that Bob is now president. Bob as president? I don't know how I feel about that. Alternatively, if we loot all of Bob and Dave's votes from the ballot box, then the only one remaining is Rosie. A vote for Rosie? Wait a minute. Has somebody tampered with the ballot box? Hmm. After counting the votes, the president is... Rosie! Rosie can't be president! No! This is unfair. This can't be. Fine, I'm leaving. See how you people do without me. Enjoy your new president. What a big baby. So our republic is great and all. Our republic is better than the tyranny of Tom right up until he loses the election. Isn't that typical? Just like if Bob wins, the entire community is shocked if Rosie wins the election. Rosie's going to be the new leader? What will Dave do? Rosie's going to be the new leader? What will Dave do? President Rosie? What's happening around here anyway? And if we intercept Dave while he's leaving, he gives the same speech. I'm off to annex old only and forge the new Republic of Dave. Don't try to stop me. The thing that's tragic about this is he says he's heading off to old only, but we know that old only is infested with death claws, which means it's highly likely that as he walks that way, he'll get killed. Hey! Not enough! No! If we happen to clear old Olney, before Dave reaches it, he arrives, says that he's founding the New Republic of Dave, and that's it. This is the New Republic of Dave. Go away. By the order of the New Republic of Dave, I order you to go away. This is your last warning. We don't get to see a new settlement grow. If Rosie is successful, we can go back to her and congratulate her. Well now, who could have ever thought? Me, President! Huh, things are really going to be different around here. Listen, I can't thank you enough. You convinced me that I could do this, and you were right. I want you to have something. Dave kept some big weapon or something locked up in the safe in his office. The code is 1138. It's yours if you want it. We don't need it anymore. And just like if Bob wins, she gives you the key to Dave's safe. Checking out his safe, we can loot a unique weapon called Old Painless. Note that if you loot the bottle caps as well, you'll turn everybody hostile. So the only thing we can loot 
is the gun. All Painless is a unique bolt-action rifle that has slightly more damage than the typical hunting rifle. There are better rifles out there, in particular rifles that we can get from the Point Lookout DLC, but when it comes to vanilla hunting rifles, this one is one of the better ones. It has 5 more damage than the hunting rifle, 15 more DPS than a typical hunting rifle, and 3 more DPS than a lever action rifle from Point Lookout, almost double the attacks per second than a hunting rifle, 5 more critical damage, 2 fewer action point cost, 0.3 more damage per action point, 0 weapon spread, which means it's highly accurate, at a cost of about 100 durability. A regular hunting rifle is going to last a lot longer before you have to repair it. Now there is another outcome of this election, which I think may have been a bug. If you loot all of Dave's votes, but you leave both Rosie and Bob's vote, then Dave responds as if Rosie won. A vote for Rosie? Bob? After counting the votes, the president is... Rosie! See how you people do without me. Enjoy your new president. But that's just what he says. Since it was officially a tie, he retains the presidency. He goes back into his office, and everyone acts as if he won the election. Now, Dave is involved in a quest called You Gotta Shoot Him in the Head. We can complete this quest easy if we made either Bob or Rosie president of the Republic of Dave. After we get the quest you gotta shoot him in the head, we can then go to Old Olney, where we'll find Dave's body, because he gets killed by the Death Claws. If he's dead there, we can simply loot the key we need to complete the quest you gotta shoot him in the head off of his body. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of the Republic of Dave. It's an odd story. It has a lot of strange quirks, and it troubles me, particularly because Dave was the father of many children. If we get the quote-unquote good ending, those children lose their father. Dave abandons his own Republic and leaves in a huff where he's promptly killed. The good ending of this quest is to rob these poor kids of the father whom they adore. Now, I don't think Dave deserves their adoration. I think he is a sleazebag. Not just because he convinced his first wife that having two wives was his prerogative as president, but also by how he treats other people, demanding that you refer to him as Mr. President on pain of death, opening fire on you if you insult him. He's an insecure, thin-skinned man. Those kind of people are not only no fun to hang out with, but they make poor leaders. He's a nasty guy, but he he has kept his family safe. He has large ambitions of annexing the entire wasteland, but I don't think that's very likely. After all, he inherited this farm from his father, Tom. He hasn't grown it since then. It's still the same size. What makes him think he could take over the wasteland if he can't even increase the size of his own republic? But I think the thing that bothers me the most is that this guy is trying to run a family like a nation. I think it's foolish to run a nation like a family. It leads to a bunch of unjust, sentimental laws made with the best of intentions at the expense of personal freedom and private property. But likewise, I think it's foolish to run a family like a nation. Every family is different, and every family does have leadership, but the parenting couple that leads the family, I think, should work as a team. The husband and wife work together to make the best decisions for that family. There may be a head of household, but they consult each other before making big decisions. Families where one dominant personality makes every decision regardless of the wishes of the spouse or other people in that family leads to a lot of sad things happening in a family. And that's what we see here in the Republic of Dave. Sure, they vote Dave into office, but he doesn't lead like an elected official. He leads like an authoritarian ruler. But Dave doesn't get all the blame for turning his family unit into a micronation because after all, his father did it before him. It's all he knows. It's how he was raised. And we learn from the official Fallout 3 strategy guide that this has been going on in his family for hundreds of years. The guide tells us that it's been around for at least two centuries. It was originally known as the Kingdom of Larry until Larry died and gave it to his son when it became known as the Republic of Stevie Ray. After Stevie Ray gave the land to his son Billy, it was known as Billsavania. When Bill died giving it to his son, Stevie Ray Jr., it was known as the New Republic of Stevie 
Ray until Stevie Ray died and gave it to his son Tom, who called it the Kingdom of Tom, until he died giving it to Dave, whereupon, as we know, he renamed it to the Republic of Dave. For some reason, the patriarchs of this family have had great ambitions of being leaders of state. But if Dave's character and the character of his son Bob are anything to go by, the men of this family haven't really deserved to be in that kind of leadership position. I think it's clear that Rosie's going to make a better leader than her husband Dave. She's the only one in the entire family that has any real experience, and I doubt very much that she's going to go off on a tangent finding a bunch of extra husbands just because she feels like she has to repopulate the wastes. But the cost of making Rosie the leader of the Republic of Dave is extremely steep. I just feel really bad robbing these kids of their dad. Even Rosie said that Dave was a good dad. He treated his kids well, fed them, clothed them, gave them shelter, protected them, even bought them toys, treated them with kindness and tenderness. His faults were many. He's a complete narcissist, has a museum dedicated to himself, but from everything we gather, he's a decent father. So we kind of have to weigh the options. Is it better to have Rosie as the president of the Republic of Dave, but all of the children lose out on their father? Or is it better to have a narcissist like Dave lead the Republic, but all of the children get to grow up with both a mother and a father? I'm mad at Dave for putting us in this position to begin with, because after all, if he acted like a mature adult and sucked it up when he lost the election, the children wouldn't lose their father. They only lose their father because he's such a baby that he leaves the Republic when he loses, which says a lot about his character as a human being and a leader. Still, I just can't stop thinking about these poor kids, which makes this a very tough call. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. What decisions did you make when you visited the Republic of Dave? Did you make Rosie president? Did you let Dave maintain the presidency? Or did you make Bob president? I think we can all agree that Bob is the worst choice. What are your thoughts on the whole polygamy thing? Do you think it's disgusting, or are you surprised that it's not more common in the wasteland? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments, and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I take Sundays off, which means I won't have a video for you on Monday, Monday, but be sure to tune in Tuesday morning for my next video. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. That's right, if you would like to see an Oxhorn or a Fallout-inspired t-shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers can access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so so much for watching, and I'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. And now, one of my inspirational.